and it's three, and it's two, and it's one. Hey, happy Friday. Oh, sorry, I went like that in front of your face. Dag it. It's all good. It's all good. How are you today? I am doing well. How about yourself? I'm okay, except it's cold and rainy and gray. Yeah, and it's going to be like that for the whole day, it looks like. And it's super windy, so I'm wondering what that's going to do to our uh, Wi-Fi, Internet, blah, blah, etc. I don't know. As soon as I can figure it out, I'll let you know. <laughs> it's all good. Oh, look, it says you're here. Yes, except for it's not really streaming yet. No, it's thinking about it. It's driving down. Um, How was your workout? My workout was good. I started off with a 10-minute cardio blitz. <laughs> Such a strange human. Be normal. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. <laughs> Normal's a setting on a dryer. Do I have to go take a course for that? Probably. <laughs> you probably need it. So what'd you do in the gym? Today was, well, I told you cardio blitz. I did shoulders. Mm -hmm. Good shoulder workout. Okay. Did triceps. Good mm -hmm. tricep workout. Okay. And I did caps. Good calf workout. All right. So you had a good workout. A good workout today. <laughs> so bizarre. Did you talk to anybody? Um, who did I talk to today? I didn't say a lot today. No? So a couple of highs and hellos, but not really a conversation. Okay. Yeah. I did legs. Had a pretty mm -hmm. decent leg workout. Right. Did you see me doing this, this, the side lunge thing? I did. The step uh, up the step, thing? Yeah. yeah, that was fun. You were rocking. I thought, hey, look, I look athletic. You do. <laughs> yeah. Good morning. Who's saying good morning to us? Good morning. Oh, Laura says don't be normal. <laughs> okay, good, because I can do that. I can do that <laughs> real that, well. Yeah. So yeah, I had a good leg workout. I'm uh, happy about that. Uh, what are you eating for breakfast? You're eating soup for breakfast. I'm eating today. soup because I put too much put water. Too much water in his oatmeal. <laughs> so it's more like soup than it is oatmeal, but I'm still eating it. And I was gonna take a picture of it today so I could post it on the website. Guess what I'm not doing? Yeah. It looks it not looks this like, one. It looks like gruel. Yes, looks really this bad. really looks like gruel. Green oh. gruel. And uh, good morning, Linda. Hi. Hi I didn't Linda. see you to the gym. You told me to remind you that we're doing our talk time. <coughs> talk about the talk a minute while I cough. Okay. So we'll be at the Newark Natural Food Store tonight um, in the Newark Shopping Center. That's downtown. 6 o'clock uh, p.m. is when we'll be starting. Um, you can arrive a little bit early if you want to do a little networking. That'd be fine. And then a little networking afterwards, that'd be fine as well. You know, just talk amongst, you know, talk with people that are interested in the same thing. So this is health yeah you know. creating more health in our lives so yeah. that that's tonight so please don't let the uh don't let the weather deter you right. we're, we're definitely going to be there we'll be there um, absolutely i don't is our i don't know if our oatmeal is gluten-free so oh, oats in general are gluten-free right. but if they're not made in a facility that is also gluten-free they can get cross-contamination right. so with oatmeal you have to actually look at it to make sure what facility it's made in and because we don't have gluten issues we don't worry we don't about it, it. Yeah. um but that is something that you do have to be aware of oats in and of themselves are gluten-free but they can they often are in are processed process, in facilities process that process wheat, wheat yeah. and so you can get cross-contamination so mm -hmm. if you do have a gluten issue, you need to be aware of that. Right. Um, so oatmeal has the standard stuff in it. Um, someone asked me yesterday, where can I get your recipe of all the stuff you put in it? Um, on our website, on our journal. So if you're a member of our website, which is only $9.95 a month, you have access to our food journals as well as our workout journals. And so every day we actually go in and write what we put in our oatmeal on right. our food journal. So right. you can go and see every day how we tweak it just a little bit. Because they're very we, similar. Right. But we do tweak it from day to day. From day to day. Depending on taste, depending on what we have, what the inventory is. What we think we're going to eat for, for lunch. Right. You know, if I want to put sunflower seeds on a salad mm -hmm. for lunch, I won't put it in my oatmeal. So you can find that on the r, &R Journey page. It's um, rnrjourney.com. And you can become a member for nine ninety five a month. Super, right. super cheap. Absolutely. Um, and um, I also do, I started making comments on my journals as well. Yes. So I'll talk about if it's a meal, I'll make some funny comments because I'm prone to do that. No. <laughs> yeah, you know, you didn't know that, did I you? I didn't know that. So you, know, you learned something new I'm about it. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. <laughs> and then on my workout journals, I was, because um, a lot of things I don't mention, it's like I do a lot of super setting. Because if you look at my journals, it's like, wow, you did six different exercises for a chest. Well, a lot of times I'm super setting two together so I in my Tell mind what that means which when you combine two exercises and you do them sim one right after the other so you don't rest in so you don't rest in between and that's considered for me that's considered one set so I might do um, like tricep push downs with tricep extensions on the cable machine one right after the other and that's to me is one set 
though I count it as, as a set for each when I run it in my journal. So, so and how many reps are you doing for each? Usually around 10. So, so you're doing a 20 rep set of two different exercises. Yes, that's okay. basically true. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I write, I explain that a little bit more. I started doing that probably about a week ago. I'm not doing that, but I might. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I write silly things like, I failed to remember what I did today. That happened to me yesterday. I couldn't remember <laughs> what I did. Mm -hmm. Um, but so yeah, good workouts and it's Friday, which is always fun and right. our speaking engagements tonight, which, which is exciting. super fun. Yeah. So, and I'm having a, a chat with somebody at noon who's interested in the work that we do. So I'm excited about that. Yeah. So we have a lot going on, but, um, I told you on Wednesday, I think that somebody asked us about being apple shaped versus being pear shaped, which right. basically uh, equates to carrying your weight in your belly or carrying your weight in your butt. Right. And I, I promised I would do some research and I would give you guys some information about it. So I, I did some research, although my notes are now wet and getting runny. <laughs> I apparently spilled water on them. Um, and I found um, an article um, and, some, and some research done at Harvard mm -hmm. about it. And then I found some supporting um, evidence that I found at um, nutritionfacts.org. Right. So the information that we're going to uh, share with you today is from those two uh, sources specifically, but they did talk about some other resources. So I'll share those with you as we go through that. So um, the first thing I have to share is a couple of um, scientific pieces subcutaneous fat, I can't even say that word, subcutaneous fat is the fat that's under your skin. And that's the fat that you get in your butt and in your right. hips, and mm -hmm. that makes you pear-shaped. You can also get that kind of fat in your belly, and that kind of gives you um, the spare tire look, right? If you're, if you're carrying subcutaneous fat, you get more of a spare tire. And that's how I carry my weight. I carry my weight here. So when I lost 20 pounds, that's where it, most of it came from. And then there's a different kind of fat, and that's called visceral, visceral fat. And that gives you more of the round uh, beer belly or mm -hmm. pregnant look. You see a, a lot of people um, will have that look. Right. And, and they tend, you tend, you see people when they have that, they walk tilted back because they're supporting the weight, which is bad for their back. Right. And they walk a little more like that. So those are the two kinds of fat you can have. Obviously, neither one of them is good for your health. Both of them are going to be... Um, contributing to heart disease and diabetes and right. high blood pressure and high cholesterol and obviously obesity and all the things that we talk about right. that weight contribute to. Um, but if you're going to look at one being worse than the other, the visceral fat, the fat that's around your organs, the beer belly or pregnant look fat um, is worse for you. And the reason is, and I thought that this was kind of inter interesting. This is interesting. So right. there's, there's two things. The old news, and this is what they've been telling us for a long time, is that um, it's linked to overactivity of the human stress rep response that, that causes fat there. So right. you've probably heard, oh, cortisol that gives you belly fat. That's the human stress response. And that, of course, raises your blood pressure, raises your blood sugar, and raises your cardio cardiovascular risk. So that's old news. Like, we've, we've known that. You've probably heard that in the press. Right. But what's new and what they're finding now with new studies is lipotoxicity, which we've talked about briefly here, and that's that your body uses your fat cells to store toxins. Mm -hmm. So when you intake toxins, rather than doing the work to actually excrete them, right. your body sticks them in fat cells. Don't want that. You don't want that. And the problem with that is, as we've talked before, is that when your fat cells get full, because you only have so many fat cells, your fat cells get full, right. as your body tries to push more fat and more toxins into an already full fat cell, it starts to spill out. Boy, we're pixelating wow. really badly. Really bad. Yeah. Hopefully it straightens out. We never know if it will. Um, I always have the camera running, so when I post them to YouTube, they're not pixelated. You don't have to deal with them that way. And I'll, I'll upload this one to our page rather than the one that's pixelated. So anyway, I'm going to go on talking about fat. Um, and the lipotoxicity, as your body pushes fat mm -hmm. out of full fat cells, you end up with it go. the spillage goes straight to your other organs. So it goes straight to your liver. And then you end up with free fatty acids directly into the liver, which obviously is not a good thing. And then those free fatty acids collect in places that aren't meant to store fat, which is places like your pancreas, your heart, and your other organs. Right. So, oh, maybe it's going to get trying, better. It's trying to, it's trying to straighten out. Right. So that's the issue with your visceral fat is that as it spills out of your fat cells, because your fat cells get full, then it 
it ends up being stored in places like your pancreas, your heart, and your other organs. Right. And we've talked about how when fat spills into the blood, that's what causes, to, it gums up the lock that mm -hmm. insulin uses to put blood sugar into your muscles. So that's a problem. And you become type 2 diabetic. Right. So the fat spillage out of fat cells is a problem. Just across the board, it's a problem. It is a slightly worse problem if you're carrying um, extra abdominal fat. And then obviously those issues are going to create dysfunction. You're going to get problems with regulating insulin and blood sugar because the, gu the locks are gummed up. They right. can't get the blood sugar into the muscles. It's going to create a cholesterol issue. We've talked about how the human body is not designed to take in cholesterol. Right. We're designed to make the cholesterol we need. Right. So any cholesterol that you take in, which is via your... Um, you eating meat, the only place that you get cholesterol is animal products. It's, it doesn't exist in, in plants. In plants. Right. Um, although you can get saturated fat from pineapple, no, not pineapple, coconut, that's pina colada on the brain, coconut <laughs> and um, avocado. But that's not cholesterol, it's different. So you get all your cholesterol from, from animals and obviously that's going to cause a problem. So. The bottom line to this Harvard study that they took away was visceral fat, which is again the fat around your organs, the, the fat that causes the beer belly or the pregnant belly look, is a major contributor to cardiovascular disease because it pushes fat into your into organs, blood, yeah, right. which you, obviously you don't want. So um, I found some information that, was, that help can say, are you at risk? And so I'm going to give this to you. You might, if you have a pen handy, you might want to be able to uh, to grab it and write this down. Um, if not, I can post it in the comments because this is um, this is interesting stuff. So there's two ways to measure it. The first one is a little more complicated, and it's the waist to hip ratio. And so what they said was, is you measure your great waist, which is right around where your belly oh, button wow. is. Right. So you measure this spot right here. And, you know, make sure your tape measure is flat, you don't have clothes on, it's level to the ground, you know, all the normal things that when you want a good measurement, do that. And then measure your hip um, number, where, wherever your hips are the widest. And what it said was for most people, that's right where your hip bones are, which you can't see because I have the almonds in the way. Oh, look, hip bones. Hip bones over my... So hip bones, so you're going to measure that spot. Um, I know for me, if I measure a little lower around my butt, I get a bigger number. So I'm not, it didn't, it wasn't clear whether you want to measure around your butt or around your hips. It said the widest point of your hips and it said at the hip bone. So you can do that. And then you're going to get a ratio. So you're going to take your waist number and you're going to divide it by your hip number. And what they're saying is for men, if that, if the outcome of that is greater than 0.95, or for women, if it's greater than 0.85, then you're at risk for having abdominal visceral, visceral fat and you probably need to you know, work on that. But so, okay, that's pretty challenging. So a whole lot of numbers and right. stuff like that. So here's an easier option that they said um, works just as well. And that's just using waist circumference. So again, we're talking about your waist, the measurement at your belly button, whatever that number is at your belly button, measure that. Again, do all the things you need to do to get a good measurement. And then low risk for men is if that number is less than 37. Low risk for women is if that number is less than 31.5. Mm. Intermediate risk is for men is 37.1 to 39.9. So intermediate for men is in the 37 to 40 range, basically. And for women, it's 31.6 to 34.9. So you want your, um, that's intermediate risk. Now, high risk for men starts at 40 inches and greater, and high risk for women is 35 inches and greater. Mm -hmm. So to, to measure whether you, you're carrying visceral fat, that's what you want to look for. Basically, for men, you want to be under 37 inches, which seems like a really big number. It does. For I'm thinking. I mean, I'm wondering if they're even taking height into consideration. Because what is yours right now? Like, Mine's well, like 30. Yeah. You know? That's real. So 37 seems like a pretty big waist for a man yeah. for me. And then for women, 31.5, which that doesn't seem so unreasonable. No, that doesn't. So, but that's what they're saying. Um, I mean, me with a 37-inch waist. I mean, yeah, I'd be, I feel like I'd be out here. Yeah. But I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe it's... An, so, it's, I don't know. That's that's what they said. Um, I, I mean, I think it's really not that hard to tell whether you're carrying visceral fat. Like, you can 
look at yourself and say, am I, am right. I thicker here in the middle right. than I probably should be? Should be. Um, so obviously visceral fat's a problem. All right, so then the question is, all right, so great, we've got these issues, you're telling us all this stuff, what do we do about that? And obviously, the easy thing I'm going to tell you is eat plants. But <laughs> WFPB. Yeah. What did I say? WFPB. Let's share it. All right, we won't share it now. Okay. Which is whole food plant-based. <laughs> um, you're right, Laura. I think that, that the, the normal American, we've talked about this before, the normal American is so heavy that we don't even realize what a healthy human body looks right. like anymore, which right. is why, and I've had this conversation with Bridge before too, that people look at us and are like, oh my God, you're too skinny. And they don't, they don't really realize that, no, that's what a healthy human that's body what, looks that's like. A, yeah, that's exactly right. So, you know, and, all right. And I'm I sorry. mean, to, uh, just to Laura's point too is, I like what you said last, which is common sense. And you, you can know, and you can look at yourself and you can tell, Right. Where your your fat is, is is hanging out, where it's you know where it's migrating to, yep, and whether or not that's a good thing, and then you know adjust accordingly. Right, and you know, and no fat hanging out anywhere, you know, high levels of it is not good. Period. Right. So I wanted to talk to you about a study they did because this is actually a little bit funny. So they did a really really huge study that said the more meat you eat, um, the bigger you are, and that is regardless of calories. So you can right. eat the same amount of calories in plants and the same amount of calories in meat, and you're gonna be heavier if you're eating meat. Right. And the Meat Association, the Cattlemen- yeah, This is funny. The Cattlemen Beef Association said, no way, that's not what happens. The people who eat meat protein get more muscle from eating meat than other, you know, than people who eat plants. Mm -hmm. So it's muscle weight, it's not fat weight. Right. You guys are wrong. Regardless of what it looks like, by the way. <laughs> It's, it's a myth. Your eyes are tricking you. Okay. So the scientists went back and said, okay, you know what? We won't just look at body weight. We'll look, we'll look at actually body fat. So they looked at a few people, 91,000. Yeah, that should be, a, that should be a, 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 a enough of a number to validate it, I think. So, and what they found is a calorie is not a calorie. Animal product calories create more fat than plant calories do, even when you eat the same amount of calories. And meat calories specifically create belly fat. Right. So I thought that was interesting. You know, we get told all the time that a calorie is a calorie and it's just simply not true. Um, meat calories, and we've talked before, meat calories are harder, harder for your body to process but easier for your body to turn into fat. Right. Whereas carb calories, which is what you get from plants, your body turns into glycogen, which is fuel, which it burns. It doesn't store right, that. Right. And if it does store it, it stores it oh, to burn it later. Right. And so it, that's what it burns first is your carb calories. So yeah, meat calories are gonna give you belly fat, visceral fat, dangerous fat. <coughs> I guess I won't talk. And I mean, and, and to me, so if, if people fear things like Alzheimer's disease and things like that, I mean, another thing to keep in mind is your, body, your brain cannot use animal products for energy. Nope. It doesn't burn any energy. So if your diet is mostly animal products, you're not fueling your brain. And what's a good way to come up with you know, dementia and Alzheimer's disease? Don't fuel your brain. You'll get there, probably faster than you want to. Um, well, and we've said before that you know some of these diets are mortgaging long-term health for short-term weight loss, and it's completely unnecessary. It is. Like you could eat really good, healthy, nutritious food, not be fat, be thin, not have visceral yeah. fat, and be healthy long term. Right. Like it's, I don't understand, and actually I do understand. There's yeah, no exactly. money in eating plants. There is no money, and that's why there's no marketing behind it. There's no, there's money in sick people. Yes. And there's money in, you know, eating animals. Yes. Think of the industries that exist because of animal products. Yeah, we, we actually all need to get on a bandwagon and create like big cauliflower. You know, there you go. Big organic cauliflower. <laughs> and they can have all the lobbyists in Washington to change the, uh, the USDA recommendations. Who, by the way, is sponsored by, you know, companies like Nabisco and the cattle industry and, you know, all the food that they are feeding us. Right. And, and turning food, us into in unhealthy, air quotes. unhealthy people. Yeah. Yeah. So the short answer is meat products are 
A, they're more calorie dense, so they're easier to eat more of than you actually need. Mm. B, those calories are not the same, they're not burned the same as plant uh, calories are. And C, they cause visceral fat, which leads to all kinds of problems because that fat ends up stored in your organs when it gets spilled out of your fat cells right. that get full. Right. So, eat plants. Right. How often do we tell them, eat plants? Um, I think we mentioned at least once a month. <laughs> <laughs> At least. I have a picture that I took of, um, of the food that we eat that I'll be sharing in our talk tonight. And, uh, and I'm so excited to be able to, to show it and say, look, this is what we eat all the time. Yeah. So, yep. And yeah. like Linda said, drink water. It's good for you. That's yes. what I'm drinking today. I That's have hot water. Drinking. I have some turmeric in my water. Yep. Um, but drink water. Your body needs water to flush all those toxins out that you're not going to store in your fat cells because your fat cells are going to be empty. Exactly. And uh, I just want to um, say it again that if you are in a uh, Newark, Delaware area this evening, um, come watch us. We'll be at the Natural Food come Store. Come say hi to us. Come say hi. And you get an opportunity to ask questions. So where, where you may not have the opportunity to ask a question during one of our live broadcasts, you can certainly... Come we'll, up, chat with us, yeah. ask it live, whatever. Yes, Elizabeth, we're hoping to video it. Um, I'm not super confident in the lighting and the sound in the room. Right. Um, so I'm not sure how well it's going to turn out, but we do plan on having our video camera there so that we can videotape it. If it turns out well, we'll post it on our website. And, and as the budget allows, eventually we'll be able to buy our own equipment so that we can make sure everything, uh, I mean the camera's ours, but I mean we would need speakers and microphones and you know, all the Possibly other lighting and all of that, right. that fun stuff. Exactly. So, you know, as, as we start getting, you know, sponsorships, whether they're individuals who are giving us $10 right. or people joining our website or people right. hiring us to help them with their health and wellness, as this grows, our goal is to be able to always video and have good quality video so right. that we can share it with people who, who can't be at a live event. Right, exactly. That's our goal. Yep. So, did you have anything you wanted to add? No, I think you said it all. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys those numbers again just um, so that you have them in case you missed them. If your waist, the measurement at your belly button, for men is greater than 37 and for women is greater than 31.5, you are carrying visceral fat, which is the da most dangerous kind of fat you can carry. Um, not to say that any fat is healthy fat, it's not. Um, the fat you need is def you'll definitely carry, and of course, I'm not talking to people who are anorexic and have eating disorders. That is, that's a different that's subject. That's a different subject, and yes. that's a psychological issue. And I can talk to that, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking to the average American who is carrying more fat than their body could possibly ever need. There is no right. Siberian winter coming that you need to have fat right. stored for. Right. So I for would Game encourage of Thrones fans, winter's not here. <laughs> right. That. Um, I would encourage you to eat plants that are high in bulk and fill you up and make you feel full. They're high in nutrition. They're really good for your cells. They're good for your skin. Your skin is the last place to get nutrition. And mm -hmm. so when your skin starts looking healthy, it's be, it means the rest of your body is well nourished. Right. So eat those plants that are high volume. They're going to fill you up. They're bulky. They're good, good nutrition. Their calories are easier for you to burn for fuel. And avoid those animal products. And I'm talking about all of the meats, animal flesh in general, including fish. Right. I'm talking about dairy, which has been shown to cause, not cause, that's the wrong word, promote cancer. And uh, eggs, which also obviously are an animal protein. Right. So that is what we have to say today. We are, do come out and join us for our talk tonight that we're giving. It's titled, Your Body Can't Count Calories and Neither Should You. Right. So we're excited to share the mm. science about that. And I see we're pixelating so again. So I guess it's time to say goodbye. I'm trying. No, you're not. I'm trying. Like and share. Like and share, yes. Um, tell people about us so that we can uh, share this information and we can make America healthy again. Right. And so with that, Sorry. on this beautiful Friday, we will say, eat real food. Not too much. Mostly, Mostly plants. plants. Hopefully we'll see you tonight. Have a great Otherwise weekend. Monday. Bye. Bye.